Why do one curl patch when you could do four? Let's use the QMMG and a couple maths to make a four peak curl patch. Todd Barton's original curl patch utilizes the four channel Buchla 281E to create several cross modulating cycling functions for a sort of gradual ebb and flow to the rhythm. It uses a single VCO and a single low pass gate. Here we'll do something similar, but with two VCOs and four multi-mode gates. We've set all four channels of the QMMG to both mode initially. Got a triangle from the XPO in channel one. And variable wave from the STO in channel four. We'll modulate channel one with our first mass channel. And to create an ebb and flow on this channel, we'll modulate its rise and fall with two other mass channels. Let's set up modulation for these modulators as well. We'll molt our original channels in the Verize gate to the Wogglebug clock input, and we'll use the Wogglebug to modulate the modulators. Let's do some modulation of pitch as well. The typical curl patch uses raw stepped random voltage for pitch, but let's use quantization this time. We'll use random voltage to select the location on Renee's X channel using the location option on the fun page. And we'll use its CV output to sequence the XPO. Now for the STO, we'll use the same random voltage to select snake patterns on the Y channel and we'll clock Y with the EOR as well. YCV to the STO. to trigger our so far unused math channel. Pick okay, its unity output to open QMMG channel four and hear the STO. Let's also add that one into our complex cross-modulation scheme. Let's also take the sine waves from the two VCOs and patch them into the Mondumix, sending XPO's sine into the channel 1 signal input and STO's into the channel 2 
modulator. Take channel two's output to QMMG channel three. Which will also open with a math channel. This gives us a ring modulated combination of the two VCOs. In channel one of the Modi mix gives me an extra copy of the XPO's sine wave, which I'll use for linear FM on the STO whenever I feel like it. out the other gate modes too. I've found that when I built a patch around both mode I can switch to VCA temporarily to make things feel a little bit sparser. Low pass or high pass will add a more juicy or aggressive character. It's tempting to say that the Krell patch, as it exists in 2024, has little to nothing to do with the ancient Krell music of B.B. and Lewis Barron on Forbidden Planet. Of course, that's true. It's true of so many things that have names. The names live on with new meanings even while providing a path to learn about the past. It can be fun to investigate these tendrils. We keep computer program data as files within folders, despite those things having almost no literal connection to those names. My own last name came with my family from Ireland to the United States at some point, but I know next to nothing about how, when, or why that journey happened. When I first saw Forbidden Planet, I was far more familiar with Leslie Nielsen as a master of deadpan comedy because of movies he starred in decades later. After we hit big challenges producing a small run of reissued QMMG in 2018, it took six more years of diligent work through our engineering, prototyping, and production teams to develop a reliable way to make the QMMG stay the same as it was in the beginning and live up to its own name. The almost 16-year-old design doesn't look or feel like we now expect a modern Eurorack module to look or feel, but I find that it still sounds great and is fun to play in any system. The QMMG will be available to order from shops worldwide on September 9th. If you're able to make it to our shop in Asheville, North Carolina, we'll also be selling them in person on Saturday, September 7th. Check our website for more details. We hope to see you there.
Thank you.